In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation on this first Friday of the month of February. It's great to be with all of you. And as always, we like to start off by inviting Mary to be with us. Mary has many wonderful titles. Mary is the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church. Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. Also, when we pray the Hail Holy Queen, at the end of the recitation of the Most Holy Rosary, we also invoke Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. <clears throat> so let's lift our minds, our hearts, our souls to Mary, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and beg Mary to pray with us and to pray for us so that we can love her son more and more. As we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners. Now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now, my friends, we're going to invite our spiritual director to be with us. Our spiritual director is the Holy Spirit. Like Mary, the Holy Spirit has many wonderful titles, among which would be the Paraclete, which is also known as the Gift of Gifts. Holy Spirit is also known as the Sweet Guest of the Soul. Also, the Holy Spirit is known as our Counselor, as well as our Consoler. Holy Spirit is our Sanctifier. That were not enough, the Holy Spirit is also our Interior Master. Let's beg the Holy Spirit, calling to mind the words of St. Paul, that we really don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans so that we can say, Abba. Abba, which means Daddy or Father. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful. And enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. And thou shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful, by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise 
never rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Fatima Pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Raphael, pray for us. St. Ignatius Loyola, pray for us. St. Blaise, Pray for us. St. Francis Xavier, pray for us. St. Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, true, my friends, the family that prays together stays together, and a world at prayer is a world at peace. So, after praying with you, I promise that I'll be praying for you, and I will be praying for you in the greatest of all prayers, and that is the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. That's right. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. This is the greatest of all prayers. I'll place you on the altar and offer the following t intentions. First will be that all of us would be open through the gifts and the workings of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps this can be our prayer today. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. My next prayer intention will be I'd like to pray for our families. For the conversion of our family members. For the sanctification of our family members. as well as for the salvation of our family members. Jesus said, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his whole soul? So, I'd like to pray for our families that we would be saved. And my next intention will be to pray in a special way for those who will be dying today. That they would open up their hearts to God's infinite mercy. that they would open their hearts to God's infinite mercy and be saved. So those are my intentions, my friends. Today we have a lot to cover. 
let's just uh, give a panoramic vision of what's on our spiritual platter, so to speak. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Blaise. Today is also the first Saturday of the month dedicated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Also the readings, the readings for today in Mass are very rich. First reading is Solomon who goes up to offer sacrifice to God. To Gibeon. And he offers God a thousand burnt offerings. And then God talks to Solomon who is the young new king of Israel. And he asked Solomon, what would he like? And Solomon asked for a wise and discerning heart. Sponsorial Psalm from Psalm 119. The Antiphon is, Lord, teach me your statutes. Then we're in the sixth chapter of St. Mark, where Jesus has sent the apostles out. They come back and they report to the Lord what has happened. Jesus has come away to a deserted place and rest a little while. Because people were coming and going so much that they didn't even have enough time to eat. So they get in the boat with Jesus. <coughs> and the people are aware of this. So they cross over. But when they arrive, the people have already beaten them to the other side. And Jesus has great compassion on them because... They are like sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus gets out. Once again, it says that he begins to teach them many things. We see our Lord as the great teacher. Teaching them many, many things. So there we have a panoramic overview, eagle, eagle's eye view of what we're going to be delving in today. And we'll try to go through it as best we possibly can in the limited time we have. Time flies when you're in good company. Remember one occasion I was teaching a class in I looked at the clock on the wall and the hand on the clock was going around like this. It was spinning. And I told the people in my, my class, see how time flies when you're in good company. Time flies when you're in good company. And we are in best, in our Perseverance family, we're in the best of company. Isn't that true? Amen. What I'd like to do with you is uh, I'd like to start with St. Blaise because this is the day in which we have the opportunity of having our, our throats blessed by the candles. 
Yesterday was Candle Mass, the presentation of our Lord. Also the Groundhog Day. Last night, many people brought in little baby Jesus statues and candles and rosaries and water. They wanted everything blessed at the end of Mass. And that's what we did. But let's uh, start by talking about the saint that we celebrate today. And his name is Saint Blaise. Okay, he, he was born in um, what would have been Armenia or today central Turkey. And <coughs> St. Blaise lived in a very difficult time where the church was being persecuted. So St. Blaise uh, became a, he became a bishop But according to tradition, the persecution was so fierce that he had to flee. And according to tradition, he found refuge. He found refuge in a cave. And according to legend he was in this cave and like saint francis and like <coughs> saint anthony and saint martin he had a good rapport with the animals so they're looking for him in the cave and there he was wrapped in prayer But he was surrounded by lions and bears and wolves. And they were just patiently waiting for him to finish his prayer. So we had this real rapport with the, the animal world. And then something happened which has made him most famous for this, that a mother came in desperate because her son was dying. Her son had a fishbone lodged within his throat. So St. Blaise he blessed the child and then the 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 fish bone that was lodged in his throat basically choking the little boy came out and he was saved then the very end of his life he was surrounded by people that were worshiping they were celebrating a pagan festival. And St. Blaise um, did not approve of this. 
but the contrary. So they beat him, they tortured him, and then they cut his head off. That's why when we celebrate the feast day of St. Blaise, uh, the priest comes out in a red chasuble because of the martyrdom. So, to this day, when you when we celebrate the feast of Saint Blaise, you'll notice uh, two candles tied with a ribbon, in the shape of an X, are used to bless the throats. And in the prayers, the church prays that those who are blessed may del be delivered from diseases of the throat and from every other illness. It is also said that while Blaze was kept in a dark prison, a woman secretly brought him some candles and food. Blaze is known as one of the 14 holy helpers, saints, or patrons for almost every aspect of life. So there we have the feast day of St. Blaise, a summary of this saint. So let's pray to St. Blaise for these three special graces. Number one, that from our throat and our mouth the words that come out from our throat and our lips and our tongue, the words we say will glorify God. The words we say will be words that will edify other people. Next, that God would help us through the prayers of St. Blaise to save us from diseases and that he would give us health. That he would give, give us health of mind, of body, but also of soul. That God especially would spare us from the disease of the soul that we call sin. So our mortal enemy number one, my friends, is not physical disease, but disease of the heart that we call sin. And lastly, as Saint Blaise died as a martyr, that we will be strong in defending our Catholic faith. They will not buckle under pressure, pressure, but we'll be always willing to stand up for the truth, to love the truth, to defend the truth, and even to be willing to die for the truth. Years ago when I, when I was um, confirmed in New York, 
Remember that the good nun said that the bishop would tap us on the cheek. And of all the gestures, it's the one that I remembered most because the nun said by that tapping of the cheek, we should be willing to die as martyrs for Christ. Pope Pius XII, one of his teachings says that there are two types of martyrdom. There is a physical martyrdom that St. Blaise underwent, in which he was beaten with clubs, tortured, and decapitated. That's called red martyrdom. And then there's another type of martyrdom, which is called white martyrdom. In this, we're dying on a daily basis, especially to our sinful tendencies, our concupiscence dying to the flesh, dying to the old man, and rising to new life. St. Ignatius Leola says that we, we don't have the, the grace to die as a martyr right now. However, when God, if God asks us to die, even as a red martyr, then he will give us the sufficient grace in that moment. We just have to say yes. Then God will supply. To read in St. Paul, God said to St. Paul, my grace is sufficient in you. So there we have, my friends, a, a brief summary of the life, the death, and the contribution on the feast day of St. Blaise. St. Blaise, pray for us. Now I'd like to move on to the reading from the first book of Kings and give you a summary of this reading, an interpretation and then an application. So. Here's a summary of what we're at. So this week we have King David is finishing his role as king. King David gives his blessing upon his son Solomon. David tells his son Solomon to try to be faithful to God, to faithful to the teachings of God through Moses. And David says, if Solomon is faithful to God and his statutes, ordinances, then God will bless Solomon, abundantly. So really the last testament of David for his son is that he fear the Lord, obey God, and love God. What a beautiful last testament. The other day in the Mass, I told the parents, you know, parents leave their children an inheritance, but wouldn't it be beautiful if the parents could leave their children a last spiritual testament. When we celebrate the feast of St. Louis of France, August 25th, 
with a beautiful second reading where St. Louis of France leaves his last spiritual testament to his son. Beautiful advice. <clears throat> beautiful advice. And I told the people in my homily, <clears throat> which you can get in my podcasts, in my website, I told the parents, why not write out a spiritual testament that you can leave for your children upon your death? Write it out now. You still might be living a, you know, another couple decades or more, but still write it out. And when you die, that they will read your last spiritual testament. Hopefully it'll be like King David. Hopefully it'll be like St. Louis of France, that your last testament to your children will be that they love God. And they try to teach their children to love God. As Jesus says, what does it, what does it profit a man? If he gains the whole world and then he loses his soul in the process. So there we have the the, the the biblical setting or context for today. We have moved from the book of Samuel to the first book of Kings, chapter 3. So we have Solomon... who climbs this mountain in Gibeon because it's the most renowned high place. So Solomon wants to start off by offering sacrifices to God. To offer sacrifices to God. And he actually offers God a thousand burnt offerings. So when he was there on this Mount Gibeon offering sacrifices, God appeared to Solomon in a dream. He appears to Solomon in a dream. And God says to <coughs> Solomon, Ask of me Whatever you want. Ask for me whatever you want. And I will give it to you. Now in your in your prayer In your prayer, that can be part of your prayer. You're in front of the Lord, and the Lord says to you, Sophie, Mark, Lulu, Carmen, Rosa, Alondra, what do you want me to give to you? What do you want to what do you want me to give to you?
So Solomon is keenly aware of the fact that he, he had a great predecessor, his father David. And he's ruling over so many people that he can't even count the number of people he'll be ruling over. And also Solomon is also aware of the fact that he's very young. So almost in, you might even think, kind of in fear and trembling, Solomon is going to ask for something special. Beautiful what some of you have said. Sophie says to love God more and more each day. Carmen, holiness. Alone the conversion of my family and hard to love you. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Beautiful responses. I wonder though what what most people in the world would tell God. I think many people would say, Lord, well, I would like to have a lot of money to put in the bank. Another one would say, well, I like a lot of possessions, a, a new expensive car and a nice big house. Another might say, well, I would just like to have a lot of pleasure, have a, as an e just an easy life of pleasure. Another might say, well, Lord, I'm getting a little bit older. How about you give me really good health up until I'm a hundred years of age? Another might ask, well, Lord, I'm not very popular. I would like to be renowned and famous. I'd like to be in the front page of the New York Times and the LA Times with a big smile on my face and people clapping for me. Now they might say, Lord, I would pray for the grace never to suffer. I don't like to suffer. These, I believe, are worldly responses that many people would say. So before giving you the response of Solomon, We're doing the spiritual exercise of this week. And our friends, so uh, today we'll be meditating upon the last part of Principle and Foundation. And that's holy indifference. By now, most of you know what holy indifference is. the last part of Prince Mount Foundation. In Prince Mount Foundation, we're called to praise God and to seek our own salvation.
I'm going to give you the categories of principle and foundation, holy difference, and let's see what Solomon is going to say. What Solomon asked for is very beautiful. And it's not going to be any of these worldly pursuits that most people would would be begging for. St. Nation says we should not prefer long life to short life. We should not prefer health over sicknesses. We should not prefer riches over poverty. <clears throat> we should not prefer honors over humiliations. But we should choose what is most conducive, what is most conducive to attaining the aim and purpose of my life, which is to glorify God in this life and the next and to save my immortal soul. That's principle and foundation. Now Solomon is going to be saying something almost parallel to what I just mentioned. Solomon is going to say this. Now he's talking to God and God has asked Solomon, ask for whatever you want, I'll give it to you. Solomon says, Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? Isn't that beautiful? Give your servant, he calls himself God's servant. I think that's beautiful for us. For us. We should also, like Solomon, say that we would like to be servants of God too. An understanding heart. So really what he's saying is give me intelligence, give me wisdom, give me right counsel, so that given that I'm the king of Israel, that I would make decisions for these people so as to govern these people properly. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, proper discernment, so as to govern these people properly. What a, what a beautiful, 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 beautiful response to, to God. What a beautiful, beautiful response to God. So, he did not ask for 
money. Wealth, prestige, honor, nor health, nor long life, nor accolades, nor applause, none of that. In other words, Solomon did not ask for worldly pursuits. He wanted a wise and discerning heart so that he could govern this immense multitude of people properly. Now, because of that, Scripture says that the Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. God says he's very pleased that he asked for that. And God says, I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. So up to this point, no one has had the wisdom, knowledge, understanding that Solomon will have. Nor will there be anyone to equal him. And then God adds this, in addition God says, I give you what you ask for, such riches and glory that among kings there is not your like. Later on, we'll see that the queen of, the, the queen of Sheba who heard about King Solomon will travel to visit King Solomon. And once she arrives at King Solomon, she's breathtaking. She's astounded to see the order, the discipline of the kingdom that was established by King Solomon. Not only was there order and discipline, but also the incredible wisdom and knowledge with which Solomon would address the people. Now, my style is to give you a summary of it, an interpretation of it, a paraphrase of the Word of God. However, I'd also like to with the interpretation, the application How can we apply this to our lives? Today is the first Saturday of the month, which we 
would like to go to Mass, receive communion, offer communion, reparation to the sins against the Immaculate Heart of Mary, sins against her Immaculate Conception, perpetual virginity, divine maternity, the profanation of Marian images, in reparation for those who draw people, children away from Mary, we want to pray a rosary. We also want to read, meditate 15 minutes on some part of the rosary. We want to do that. To please Mary. But as we see the wisdom of King Solomon His incredible wisdom. Let's turn to Mary, see the wisdom. We honor her the first Saturday of the month. And as adults, many of you also are parents. Let's turn to Mary. who's known as Our Lady of Good Counsel, Our Lady Seat of Wisdom. And beg Mary for the grace beg Mary for the grace of true wisdom knowledge discernment, intelligence, understanding. So that we can properly know God's will in our lives. And so that we can properly direct our children are those who are under our charge. That we would not make decisions according to the flesh, but we'd make decisions according to the Spirit, that we would be led by the Holy Spirit. That we do in our lives, We do in our lives would be done always for the honor and glory of God and for the salvation of many souls. So my friends, I invite you to share our, our message today with your many, many friends. It's a good way to spread wisdom by sharing our conversation with your friends. And for my part, I'd like to impart to you my priestly blessing. I'll pray for you in Mass, and you'll pray for me. So in honor of St. Blaise, in honor of the wisdom of Solomon, in honor of our Lady Seat of Wisdom, I will bless you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you with true wisdom in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.